<clears throat> Alright, what's up everybody? Uh, I am Ike back here with another Trucker Rag Chew Live. I am in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and it smells like dog food here. There's a, a dog food place that they only they make them as a pedigree or some crap like that just right down the road from here and the wind's kind of like out of the north and uh, it smells like dog food actually making me hungry for some corned beef hash but uh, I'm backed into a dock here at Lowe's um, and so if you hear some bumping and grinding no no one's getting it on around here they're just unloading a trailer uh, a DC drop trailer Anyways, another good uh, uh, week for me. Last week I was at the OC. This week uh, I'm here uh, in uh, Oklahoma City where I was hoping to be last week. But uh, unfortunately last week I, I didn't have a great run on Friday. But this Friday I got a pretty good run. Doing good on miles this week and drops. Another good week. Next week, look at my tire over there. <laughs> kind of look, see some things underneath the front of the trailer. Uh, last, uh, uh, next week, I'm sending my daughter to Washington, D.C. on Monday. She's really excited about that. She's 12 years old. So, uh, that's uh, going on. Um, not much else. Uh, this will be the last Trucker Right You Live that I'll do um, until the month of August. Next week I won't be around on Thursday night. And uh, the week after that I'm hoping to have my wife in the truck with me or my daughter, one of the two. And the week after that, one of the two. And then we get into J July Rehab. And uh, some of y'all know what the July Rehab is. So if you don't know what July Rehab is it's a um, thing that I kind of started up it's kind of like fasting for Catholics you know so kind of like Lent but I'm not Catholic even though I do believe in fasting and all that kind of stuff uh, and that's what I'm going to do I just call it rehab just to kind of give it a little bit more secular appeal because anytime you say fasting you know, oh you're getting real uh uh religious on us and I don't mean to get religious on everybody there but I'm just uh you know that's my thing you can call it whatever you want I'm gonna call it rehab just for the fact that you know, just be a little different uh, I'll do another video on that here uh, maybe tonight if I get my thoughts in order for that right now that's not on the top of my mind because I got another well less than a month until that happens so that's that's the deal <clears throat> anyways hey Debbie what happened to your business anyways um, uh, that's it I uh, got a couple of questions here uh, about Mexican trucks to the USA hate them uh, thank you George Bush and uh, actually thank you to uh, uh, Ronald Reagan George Bush and Bill Clinton because if you look at NAFTA it started back in 1986 and the whole Mexican truck thing uh, is a part of NAFTA it's like our promise or some bull crap and, uh, if people would uh, would think about Ron Paul maybe we wouldn't you know we could repeal NAFTA but you know don't want to get too politics on y'all but that's what I think about Mexican trucks in the United States of America um, Andy asks here, any idea how long it takes before to get a uh, new truck uh, with uh, Snyder National? Well, let me just say this. When I first started here, about a year ago, in July would be a year, uh, they put me in a new glider. What a glider is, it's a, it's a brand new truck, chassis and all that, but the engine is remanufactured. They gave me one of those, which is, you know, not too bad, the truck you know, wasn't the greatest, but, you know, the motor, but, um, the, uh, but I had that, I put 60,000 miles on it, and then our dedicated account, uh, took, um, got some new trucks, and they hooked me up with a new truck, 
and they hooked another driver up and here just recently got two brand new trucks so but just just to, just saying um it's not how long you've been with s and i as much as how much it's been in trucking as well you know your experience counts so if you're new to it you may get something that's all dented up so that's just how it works um which it's you know it makes a lot of sense that way when i started at warner 10 years ago um they put a stone cold rookie like myself in a brand new peterbilt and uh one of the first things i did was bend up that bumper you know not used to the whole you know length of the hood there and first thing i did is bend that bend up that bumper on a brand new peterbilt 379 and um so i you know you got to look at the reason you know uh, reason why so the thing is when the the thing about warner is they put rookies in those uh new trucks and then i done three four years i went back on uh, 06 so that's been four years and they put me in an old piece of junk kenworth so i'm just saying all right uh I had another question on a uh, that someone from last week asked about um, something. Uh, if you're on the chat stream, bring it up again for everybody because I've just got so much going on with uh, stuff and I'll, I get so many comments and I get a lot of question comments. A lot of them are good. I get a lot of good comments on my YouTube stuff. And uh, I just don't have time to answer them. So I designate times like these to answer those questions. Um, you are senile. No, you are senile. Anyways, I probably endorse Dr. Pepper. Um, even though it's a big old thing about... Uh, it's better than Pepsi, though. I'm anti-Pepsi. I've learned some things. And I think I shared with it to y'all last week on the uh, off the off the recorded version of this. So after uh, we uh, stop recording and send this to YouTube, uh, maybe we can talk about Pepsi and Bash Pepsi and Pepsi products. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, You know, a lot of times about those new trucks, it just depends on um, what's available at the time. You know, you could get a brand new truck if that's all they have available. And trust me, Schneider has been known to have bad, bad, bad trucks. Well, they're making a big old investment in brand new trucks this year. And um, they're hoping to... Uh, you know really weed out those old trucks so you know if you start you may have an old truck but you know maybe within a year especially if you're good to your dispatcher your dbl whatever you'll call them uh you may get a brand new truck after that so um you know after a while you know what do i think about stevens transport um stevens is i don't know i mean it just depends if it's a good training company but if you want to be out on the road, if you don't have family, Stevens is a pretty good company to go for. I mean, I pass them like crazy. I mean, they're slow, but it, you know, speed doesn't matter. Um, the uh, whole Stevens transport, me, myself, I'd stay away from them because they require so much time out. They're a refrigerated carrier. And just go by this. Most refrigerator carriers are going to be 48 state OTR. So if you get on with Stevens, that's mainly what it is, unless you find a rare dedicated. They keep on sending me brochures in the mail uh, about what they have to offer, and um, I'm just not impressed with, with what I'm doing. I mean, I got new trucks. I got nice trucks. But, uh, you know, if trucking is more about than, you know, than having nice trucks, you know. What do I think about Prime? Prime is, I would say, a little better than Stevens. 
but like I said that's another refrigerated carrier but they have different uh, different modes of transportation I don't know if they have dry box they may have dry box uh, mainly refrigerated and and they do have a uh, flatbed and um, you know the thing about prime and CR England they try to get you in these lease lease things you know don't sign up for a lease because they will own you be a company driver and make your money and uh, if you ever want to go buy your truck go buy it through the bank and um, unless I, I don't know unless you find some other way but I mean buying it through buying a truck through a bank is the, uh, the easy I say it's the easiest way I mean a lot of people can't do that but uh, it's the smartest way but uh, anyways yeah well see our England pushes and, and there's many videos oops my screen went black there we go excuse me dr. pepper getting the best of me uh, see our England sitting there uh, they push you in that stuff same with prime um, the thing about I, I like being a company drivers because I don't have to deal with all that stuff you know if, if I was to ever buy my truck I'd be sitting there looking at um, um, never seeing the house because I'm always trying to pay my truck bill my insurance bill my fuel bill my f fuel is crazy um, trust me I mean it's nothing to put eight hundred dollars worth of fuel just just in one tank and gosh you're doing that three or four times a week uh, really adds up you really have to do, do your stuff right and being a company driver there's a lot more options that you can do to be at home with the family I'm a family man family first this is this trucking stuff that's what I do for a living I mean it's not my lifestyle I've just happened to spend three nights on the road a week so um, uh, Tri packs, you talking about um, the uh, um, APUs? Uh, these new trucks do have air conditioners on them, but they're not APUs. They run off a of battery. But uh, the, uh, the 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 APUs. Is, uh, hang on, let me adjust this chat a little bit. Um, APUs are great to have, but you know, Butler, we had an APU. Fun, it was good to have. Ran TV off of it. All that. And I imagine when you mean tri pack, that's what I mean, not trip pack. You know, I was one of the two. Yes, okay. Alright, that's why I, uh, I mean, we had uh, the the uh, the carrier version and the thermocube version on the Butler stuff. So, alright, let me catch up here. I'm behind on here. Do you think you can make it on a lease? Prime says more miles. Oh, like I said, I mean, I've heard of comp I've heard of drivers. Now I've, this is all hearsay because I haven't worked for these companies. But there's a list of companies out there that that they'll get you in these leases, and um, they'll they'll say uh, you know either lease with us or become an owner or, or, or a company driver, and then they give. Uh, crappy equipment to the company driver and then they give him no miles to force him to lease and then when he's forced to lease he still ain't making no money because you know the company's taking it from him um, bottom line is unless you know what you're doing don't lease from these companies these major companies here alright still trying to catch up here uh, yeah uh, Stevens four to six weeks that seems re you know what they do so if you're wanting to be a, a family man and trucking stay away from that stuff you get new to it all these options are available to you dedicated you can be home the most and make the most miles or make the most money not necessarily gonna make the most miles but you'll make the most money dedicated dedicated is home time and money time and that's from personal experience um, 
What do I think about trucks with the big ass sleepers? I think they're cool to look at. I really do. I, and I actually think that one of these days, once the kids move out of the house and I take my wife with me on the road, we're just living there. I mean, you know, that'd be awesome. What do I think about oil field work? It's hard work. Uh, especially down here in Texas where it gets real hot. Well, I forget I'm in Oklahoma, but in Texas and here in Oklahoma, it gets real hot. And uh, you got to really have that on your mind when you're in the oil fields. Lots of money in the oil fields, though. Lots of um, money in the oil fields, but lots of hard work. And, you have, and to be totally honest, you need to go where the work is because it moves. I mean, where I live in part of Texas here about five years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, we had what you call the Barnett Shell, which was really, 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 really big. And um, lots of people making money off of it and then just died. Now you go to South Texas, it's big time. And out in West Texas, out towards Midland, Odessa, it's really big. Of course, y'all have heard of North Dakota. Um, I mean, it'll, it'll be big, and then they'll get what they want out of it and go somewhere else. And that's the way it is with this gas. So it's hit and miss. You know, you can make good money in it. Find you a job that's going to be there uh, 10, 15 years from now and, uh, and not uh, just kind of just here um, now. Anyways, uh, yeah, a guy was sitting there asking me on on Facebook and on YouTube, say, hey, don't forget about the question last week. And it's like, I don't know if he's here or not uh, on the chat. So, because it was a really interesting question. Um, what else do we have? There was another comment on one of my videos asking about how do you make money driving so slow 60 mile an hour keep that daggum left door shut listen the funniest thing i i went to mountain home arkansas earlier this week and I, I that's almost a regular run for me anymore um and i'm doing about 60 61 and i make one stop and that's um get out stretch legs use the bathroom i'm not out but five minutes but on my, on my trip from Dallas to Little Rock on I-30, I've seen the same trucks that pass me over and over and over again. The same trucks. All right? You know they're the same trucks because they, you know, a lot of times they're owner-operators and they have you know, their own little unique truck. And you see, there he goes. And then a few miles later, there he goes again. Oh, there goes that guy. Oh, there goes that guy again. You know, they pass you four, five, six times before you get to Little Rock. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, having a fast truck doesn't mean anything if you stop so many times like these drivers do. And uh, so, and, that, and that's the thing. And like I said, dedicated in a slow truck, it don't matter. Because you're making your miles, but, but you're making extra money too. So, what I, see that, that's a kind of a, uh, would I rather drive local OTR? That's kind of a question that um, just depends on who you are. I mean, me, I mean, of course, I would be home every day if I could, if I made the kind of money. A lot of, time, a lot of things that you face when you're a local driver is that you won't make the kind of money. Um, but, you know, unless you get like a FedEx or UPS gig or something like that, LTL carriers. Uh, did you have an OTR position before you came a dedicated driver? Not with Schneider. Schneider, they hired me on for this account. They hired me uh, to do hall doors for Masonite. And if you go on the uh, Schneider website, uh, SchneiderJobs.com, they, uh, hi Susan, uh, if you go on the SchneiderJobs.com, they'll have a list of freaking jobs that you know oil field or dedicated or intermodal OTR whatever's in your area you just like look up your county see what's closest to you that's the thing with this and now so and that's what I did I remember sitting there uh, 
looking at um, jobs. I was at Butler. I was at a truck stop there on July 4th last year. And I was sitting there for like three or four days watching families go watch the fireworks display. You know, and I'm sitting there in a flying J in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I was like, man, this gig has got to stop. And that's when I found this. You know, they, Butler gave me so much time sitting on my butt. I got up on the internet and I looked for a freaking job. And I found that the Schneider same product that I used to haul a few years ago with Warner. But pays way better. And, uh, and that's what they got me on this for. So intermodal is basically you're hauling. You ever see those containers? You know, a lot of times you see them on 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 trailers. You also see them on on trains. That's what it is. They take these freaking containers off the trains, and they got to put them on a truck to take them to a warehouse or something. And then after they empty, they go to another warehouse to get them get it loaded back up to go put it back on a train. That's intermodal for you. That can be regional. Or it can be local. One of the two. A lot of times you find a local job doing that. A lot of times you find a regional job. Um, from understand, uh, they make pretty good money. So, uh, does Schneider train to go on dedicated runs? What do you mean train? I mean train to drive a truck. I've seen trainers uh, on dedicated. But with us, if we hire an experienced driver, they'll send a, uh, you know, they'll send that driver with us for like a day just to show them our system, paperwork and all that, just the, the dedicated system, what we're doing, what, you know, how to get in these stores, what the process is, where to go pick up your trailer, that kind of thing, uh, just for like a day, just a local run. But as far as uh, having, um, trainers I mean actual driver trainers I mean, yeah they have them we don't have them on ours but uh, on our dedicated we only have 25 drivers on our dedicated account we're kind of small and I like it that way um, I have the lizard phrase usually using the lizard phrase okay love it whatever that means I'm trying to go up and see Oh, you uh, changed on me there. Uh, you changed numbers and and colors and all that stuff. Um, we have e logs on these trucks, and then again, you get the perception of these people that uh, go around thinking uh, all e logs you can't make no money. Let me show you my paycheck. I make more now than what I did on paper logs. That's a fact. And when I I did on, was on paper logs, uh, I was running my butt off, you know. And I didn't make that much money. So yeah, you, you know, e logs are, are are easy. And if you maximize your time right, you can make money doing anything. Um, yeah, Schneider does, but, um, it, if you're wanting to go, once you get done with training with, uh, Schneider, they, uh, oh gosh, my screen went dark again. There we go. Um, if you, if you're doing training to learn how to drive a truck, once you're done with training, you can go on to any job, any, uh, account any type of thing that's available so if Mason if you're in Dallas and Masonite has uh, uh, a different uh, you know has a Masonite account you know has a driver opening you know and just in time for you to get off of uh, get out of training I mean yeah you can get right on uh, it just you know just depends on what's available and as far as getting a trainer that's undedicated it's just depends on what's available all that yeah yeah you got to have paper logs in case your e-logs go down uh, so yeah but anyways um, 
Any more immediate questions? I wish that fellow was on here asking about the uh, question. I, I can't remember what I was questioned about. And um, it was a good question, too, I thought. I'm fixing to stop the recorded version. This, the recorded version will go straight to YouTube. Well, after this is over, then it'll go to YouTube. After, but, uh, anyways, are lot lizards a big problem? I don't see any lot lizards. <laughs> I'm behind the lows. Uh, they're not a big problem with what I'm doing, but um, depends on what you call a problem. Guy keeps on driving around in circles, seeing what I'm doing. Uh, it, it, it depends on what they are uh, considered a problem. I mean, for me, lot lizards are not problems. I love lot lizards. And you know what I do to lot lizards? I don't give them money. They give me money. And you want to know what happens? No, I'm not a pimp. When I see a lot lizard walking around the parking lot, I take my video camera and I click record. And I'll sit there and I record it. My biggest video on YouTube is my lot lizard video. And I'll click it, I'll record it, and then put it on YouTube, and then boom. I did that about what two years ago almost one of my first videos I did here on uh, in the trucking side of my YouTube channel and uh, <laughs> I uploaded it went to sleep the next morning I checked the views and it had gotten like over a thousand views just overnight and I'm thinking gosh I need to see me some more lot lizards you know so, uh, lot lizards are a good thing in my line of work. So, yeah, they're unloading me right over here. Just There's a, there's a swift trailer just on to the right of my trailer here. They drop that trailer, swift does, and they just unload them at night. So, that's what they do. Um, a lot of talking, a lot of bumping and grinding and all that kind of good stuff. So... So, no, lot lizards are not problems. I think they're a good thing. God bless the lot lizards because you hooked me up with possibly good money on YouTube. All right, looks like we're dropping out on some uh, viewers here. So, uh, I'm going to... Uh... Oh, there's a bunch of them for Swift. Just look them up. I'm not going to bash Swift. Um, I, I guess I can. I think Swift sucks, but... Anyways, looks like we're dropping some viewers, so I'm going to stop the recorded broadcast. I'm going to still keep this live, and um, we'll, uh, we'll consider it a video for all of y'all watching the recorded version here on YouTube. Uh, so we're going to see y'all for Trucker Rack to number something later. <laughs> I don't have anything recorded, so... As a matter of fact, my battery's dead on my phone. I, or my uh, camera. Y'all, do check out the video that I did um, over this past weekend. I did a video uh, at a friend's place. He was putting up a tower with an antenna on it. 89 feet. Let's see, the tower itself is 89 feet. I'm sure with the antenna and everything on there, it was over 100 feet. Uh, it's about a 28-minute long video and uh, it was a good um, good time so if y'all haven't seen that and if you're interested in radio stuff like I am uh, go watch them alright so uh, that's it y'all on the recorded version y'all have a good one out there and we'll uh, do this again the live version in August so that 73